Hello, very, very happy good evening. So this is Krishna Veni and we've been talking about the story of life on earth and that's biology. So welcome to my session. So today we're going to do a combo. What is this combo? So we're going to discuss two chapters together today. So we're going to discuss strategies for enhanced food production as well as microbes and human welfare. So we're going to discuss both the session together. So how are we going to revise or how are we going to uh, recap the session? So we are going to talk about questions and based on the questions I will revise the theory that is what we are going to do today so that is today's agenda so tomorrow at 5 p.m. we are revising the remaining three chapters of plant kingdom so we are going to talk about transport in plants your mineral nutrition as well as your plant growth development so we have three chapters which we are going to discuss tomorrow all right yes so we'll finish off the plant physiology as well so today we'll be done with this unit that my, that is microbes in human welfare so we are just left with biotechnology so biotechnology will be done in the next week okay i hope your preparations are going on fine hi anthony b yes a very very happy good evening yes how are you doing so thank you so much for joining my session so please do like share and subscribe so for all those who are new, so Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I teach a class 12 chapter. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, I teach a class 11 chapter. Come on, let's quickly discuss your strategies for enhanced food production as well as your microbes in human welfare. So first we'll start with strategies for enhanced food production. Yes, ready? Yes. So shall we move forward? So let's see how much you are going to give me uh, and how much time you're going to give me the right answer. So if a question pops up, so we will discuss the concept behind that question. So in a way, we will recap this chapter as well. Hi, Vishal. Yes, a very, very happy good evening. So I hope your preparation is going on fine. So thank you for joining my session today. A very, very happy good evening. Yes. So please do like, share and subscribe. Okay. So shall we move forward? Yeah. So today it's a combo type. So first we're starting with strategies for enhanced food production. So here we move forward. So uh, what are the topics that we discussed here in this chapter? The first topic we spoke about animal husbandry, so that is the care for livestock, right? So we spoke about dairy animals, dairy farming, poultry. We spoke about beekeeping, that is apiculture and finally fisheries. Hi, sweetie. Hello, a very, very happy good evening. So thank you for joining my lecture. So please do like, share and subscribe. So then we spoke about plant breeding. So before that, we also spoke about uh, what are the types of breeding. So what is inbreeding? What is outbreeding? So what are ex uh, controlled experimental methods here? Right. So then we start talking about plant breeding, conventional plant breeding and mutational breeding and uh, plant resistance to diseases, plant resistance to pests. So all these we spoke about. Then we spoke about single cell culture, single cell proteins and finally tissue culture. Right. So these are the things we discussed in this chapter. Now let's talk about the question. So when the breeding is between animals of the same breed, it is called dash while crosses between different breeds are called as dash so outbreeding inbreeding inbreeding outbreeding outbreeding crossbreeding crossbreeding inbreeding so what is the answer here yes so crosses between different breeds are called as yeah so everyone's giving me the answer so the right answer is inbreeding and outbreeding so the breeding between animals of the same breed so this is inbreeding and between two different species. So this is automatically outbreeding. Yeah. So now talking about the different types here. So now I will recollect this particular concept. So we have two types of breeding, right? So what are the two types? So one is inbreeding and the other one is outbreeding. Right, so inbreeding is when you mate between or within the same breeds. So these breeds have a common ancestor. So here you get homozygous characters. So here you get pure line characters. So your desired genes are selected and your harmful genes are eliminated here, right? But this also has a disadvantage. So continuous inbreeding leads to inbreeding depression. Yes. Hi, Jake Prakash. 
yes a very very happy good evening so thank you so much for joining my uh, lecture today so please do like share and subscribe amazingly ma amazing magical method which one which one you're inbreeding yes jay prakash i had my tea how about you okay yeah so outbreeding so outbreeding can be of three types one is between the same breed or within the same breed but no common ancestor so this is like arranged marriage right so they have no common ancestor okay so this is your outcross or this is known as your outbreed the next one is between two different breeds so this is intercross or this is your cross breeding right so this is your cross breeding so one example is hesedale was born from your merino rams and your bikaner apes right yes oh my way of revising wow thank you antonia b thank you hi ved yes how are you so thank you for joining my youtube class so thank you so much so please don't forget to like share and subscribe so vishal says i had cake no vishal sadly i didn't have cake so i had a sandwich and i had chai so that was my evening snack okay fine so the last was interspecies breeding so this is between two different species like your donkey and your horse so this is mule right so these are the types of breeding so this is your hesedale so this is your merino rams this is your bikaner apes so here your merino uh, merino rams were male and your bikaner apes were female okay yes so the second question in breeding depression usually increases fertility only usually reduces productivity only usually reduces fertility and productivity usually increases fertility and productivity yes what is the right answer yeah you're right jay prakash yes so what is the right answer here it reduces fertility and productivity yes yes absolutely right so others agree with option c yes so others agree with option c no issues okay so continuous inbreeding leads to inbreeding depression that reduces fertility so moving forward to the third one what is moet so multiple ovulation and embryo transfer technology or your multiple ovulation energy transport technology method of ovulation energy transfer technology method of ovulation energy transport technology so this is a very easy question so the right answer is multiple ovulation embryo transfer technology so what is this it is a type of control breeding experiment All right so what do you do here so here the cow is administered with a lot of fsh that is follicular stimulating hormone so this induces follicular maturation and super ovulation it produces ovules much quicker so it will not take the usual oestrus cycle but it happens much quicker right so now the egg is allowed to male uh, is allowed to male with an elite bull or you artificially inseminate the sperms right and then you have fertilization happening so fertilization undergoes a series of division like this so exactly in the 8 to 32 stages it is recovered it is recovered non surgically and it is implanted in a different cow so now this will be a surrogate mother so this will be the genetic mother so this is multiple ovulation embryo transfer technology so raguram hello and welcome to my session so thank you for joining my session so please do like share and subscribe right so this is M O E T. So, question number four: The new varieties of plants are produced by selection and hybridization, mutation and selection, introduction and mutation, selection and introduction. So, what is the right answer? So, here we are talking about plant breeding. So, how do you do? What is the answer here? Yes, the new varieties of plants are produced by selection and hybridization, mutation and selection, introduction and mutation, or selection and introduction. So, how do you do it? Yes, what is the right method? Yes, selection and hybridization. This is one step in your plant breeding. 
So plant breeding, what is the main step? First you do germplasm collection. So collection of all the alleles and the genes that is present of all the varieties. So that is your germplasm. So from that you select your desired parents, right? So once you select the desired parents, you do cross hybridization of the parents. Then you select the recombinant, then you test the recombinant and then you further commercialize it, right? So these are the ways and we have done this technique for your wheat and rice for your sugar cane as well as for your millets. So in your wheat and rice, we have produced your semi dwarf varieties. Right, so question number five, which of the following is a variety of brassica resistant to the white rust disease? So your rust disease is caused by a fungus and brassica is a type of mustard. So you have a tablet column in your NCRT, yes? So now what will be the answer? So yeah, this might be a little tricky, but this was asked in 2015 in your NEET. Any idea what can be the answer? Yes. So which of the following is a variety of brassica that is resistant to white rust disease? Yes, Antonia B, absolutely fine. Pusa swarmi, that is current dry. So this is it, okay. No, this is not hemagri. So this is hemagri was not resistant to the white rust of disease. So him, no, no, here the answer is... Uh, so, we are asking resistant to your brassica, right? So, didn't you have it like this? So, brassica, the resistant variety is this and it was resistant to alphids, right? So, here the this is your uh, pest resistant. So, similarly, we had disease resistant as well. So, as far as I know, the disease resistant variety is Pusa Swarman. Yes. Yes, you have your book to cross check. Yes. So cross check, so it should be Pusa Swarman. So Himagiri was not your Brassica resistant. So they are asking a variety of Brassica. So Brassica is mustard, Himagiri is wheat. Here nowhere wheat is mentioned, right? So Himagiri is a variety of wheat that was resistant, okay? So Brassica is the starts with Pusa varieties, okay? Yeah, so please read the question. So very soon you are uh, vulnerable to make mistake. So please hold on, think and then answer. Fine? Yes. Okay, you told us, okay, you guys told me Himagiri is wheat. Yes, you're absolutely right. Yes, exotic anakin. Yes, welcome to my lecture. So thank you. So please do like, share and subscribe. Okay. So wheat which have solid stems. So this is not preferred by stem fly. So this is a natural uh, way of prayer. Uh, Protection. So smooth leaves and nectarless cotton varieties are not attracted by ballworms. High aspartic acid, low nitrogen and sugar content in maize. They are resistant to stem boyers. Right. And you have to remember this tableau column. So please make sure you will remember this tableau column. So we are going to question number six. So which of the following factor or factors is or are responsible for may resistance to may stem boyers? High aspartic acid, low nitrogen content, low sugar content, all of the above. So just now in the previous slide, I gave the answer. Yeah, so all of the above makes it resistant to all the may stem borers. Right, so Kumara Vail Dharni, so I guess this is our Dharni, yes, hello, so thank you so much for joining my lecture, so please do like, share and subscribe. Okay, so ma'am, spinach, they are rich in protein, does it contain all essential amino acids, not essential amino acids, but they contain vitamins, it is a part of biofortification. Okay, hi Vasan, so thank you for joining my lecture, so please do like, share and subscribe. Very good, so here it is all of the above. So question number seven, so which of the following variety of wheat having a high protein content has been used as a donor for improving cultivated wheat? Hemagri. Atlas 66, Sonalika, Kalyan Sona. So all our varieties of wheat. So which one is bound to have a high protein content and it is used for biofortification? Yes, Atlas 66 has twice the content of your tryptophan and your lysine, right? Yes, absolutely right. Very good, Antony. Very good, Darni. Good, Raguram, Anakin. Very good. So here it is option B, right? Okay. So question number 8, an explant is a dead plant, part of the plant, part of the plant used in tissue culture, part of the plant that expresses a specific gene. So what is an explant? Yes, quick. 
So what is an explant? It comes as a part of tissue culture. I did explain what is explant. Okay, now once again I'll explain. Suppose if you want a rose plant from me, I will cut a portion of my rose stem and give it to you. You will put the stem in your balcony, right? So when you put your uh, piece of stem that you borrowed from me in your balcony, so that has a potential to develop into a complete plant, right? So that is your explant. Yes, so explant is the part of the plant used in tissue culture. Absolutely right. Ma'am, it seems easy ma'am. Before 10 minutes you solve questions from this chapter. Yes, very good. Okay, so this is again a revision. So high milk yielding varieties of cows are obtained by super ovulation, artificial insemination, use of surrogate mothers, all of the above. Yes, Dharani, it is totipotency. So, high milk yielding varieties of cows are obtained by super ovulation, artificial insemination, use of surrogate mothers, all of the above. Yes, all of the above. So, because it is a part of multiple ovulation embryo transfer technology. Yes, very good guys. So, here we move forward. Just give me a second. Yeah. So question number 10. Protoplasts of two different species are fused in micropropagation, somatic hybridization, clonal propagation, organography. So protoplasts of two different species. For example, let me say a potato and a tomato. So they are few are two different species fused in micropropagation, somatic hybridization, clonal propagation or organography. So Raghuram, please re-correct your answer. So once again, think what should be the right answer. So I am talking about protoplast fusion. So in protoplast fusion, we don't say micropropagation. So it is somatic hybridization. Yes, what is clonal propagation? Fine. So I have clones, right? So Dolly the sheep was my clone. Now if I make uh, copies of my Dolly. So Dolly was made from the mother. Right now, if I make copies of Dolly from Dolly itself, so that is clonal propagation. Fine, yes, yeah. So, what is protoplast fusion? So, protoplast is a cell which is without your cell wall, the intact components of the cell without a cell wall. Right, so two cells I take. Suppose, let me take the cells of your potato and of your tomato. So both of them, I remove the cells and I put it on a media. So which means I, in, in a nutshell, I have only the protoplast, right? So I fuse the protoplast together with the help of a chemical that is polyethylene glycol, that is PEG, okay? So I fuse them. So now when I fuse them, both the genetic materials get mixed up. So this cells have this genetic material, this have this genetic material. Yes, it is pomato, you're absolutely right. So this gets mixed up, right? So now I grow them on the media. These are somatic cell hybrids. The somatic constituents of both the cells are mixed together. So it is a part of somatic hybridization. Okay? Hi, Tam Tamar Saran. Yes, welcome to my lecture. So thank you for joining my lecture. So please do like, share and subscribe. Yeah, interspecies hybridization is the mating of animals within the same breed without having a common ancestor. Two different related species, superior males and females of different breeds, more closely related individuals within the same breed for 46 generation. So what is the answer for question 11? Hello, hi, so thank you for joining my lecture. So please do like, share and subscribe. Yes, what is interspecies hybridization? Yes, I didn't explain about it. Yes, what is the answer, Antonia B? Yeah, so huh? superior males and females of different breeds. Mm, yeah, it is two. Yeah, so this should be the only possible one because two different related species. No, it is two different species here. So this is different breeds. Animals within the same breed. So interspecies hybridization should be two different non-related species. It should be. Okay, so here it is. Okay, so here there is a small twist. Okay, so here you go with two different related species. So your donkey and your horse, 
they are two different species but they never said they are different they are similar species right so two different related species of course your donkey and horse are related because both are mammals right yes so it is two different related species so interspecies hybridization is between two different species okay yes I did explain in the start, right? So outbreeding, okay. So outbreeding is breeding, okay. Outbreeding has three classification. One is outcross, one is crossbreed, and the other one is interspecies hybridization. So outbreeding is between individuals of the same breed who do not have a common ancestor. So it is like your arranged marriage. So arranged marriage, in your arranged marriage, the girl's parents and the guy's parents are two different beings, right? But we are all homo sapiens. So that is your outbreeding. So the products of outbreeding is known as your outcross. Okay, Anakim? Yes? So here the right answer is option 3. So moving forward, so question number 12. So Jaya and Ratana developed for green revolution in India are the variants of maize, rice, wheat and bajra. So what is the answer? So Jaya and Ratana developed for green revolution in India are the varieties of your rice. Yes. So I told you to remember RJ. So R for rice, R for Jaya and Ratna. So we have to remember Sona wedded Sonalika. So what are they? So it stands for W. So these two are the varieties of wheat. So this is how you will remember them. Yes. So question 13. So breeding of crops with high levels of minerals, vitamins and proteins is called as Somatic hybridization, biofortification, biomagnification, micropropagation. Yes, so breeding of crops with high levels of minerals, vitamins and proteins is known as biofortification. Yes, absolutely right. No, Antony, you are saying biomagnification, that is different. So here the right answer is biofortification. I guess it's a typo er error that is completely fine. Yeah. So, Soma clones are obtained by plant breeding, by irradiation, by genetic engineering, by tissue culture. So, Soma clones are obtained by, that is clones from the cell of a plant, right? So, they are obtained from where? So, they are obtained from tissue culture. Yes, absolutely right. So, in tissue culture, you do micropropagation. In micropropagation, everything is identical to the plant, right? So, they are your Soma clones. Absolutely right. So, this is the right answer. Very good. You guys are answering very quickly. Yes, hello. Very, very happy. Good evening after a very long time. So, we are grateful to have you in our session. So, please do like, share and subscribe. Okay. So, moving forward, the last question from this chapter. We are pretty quick. So, we are done solving in 20 minutes. So, which of the following is generally used for induced mutagenesis in crop plants, X-rays, UV rays, gamma rays, alpha particles? So, X-rays, UV rays, gamma rays, alpha particles, which is used for induced mutagenesis in crop plants? Gamma rays. So, what are the answers for others? Yes, we do mutational um, breeding as well. So, we induce mutation when we do not have a parent plant. So, when I do not have a wild naturally occurring disease resistant plant, so I induce mutation so that I get a disease resistant variety. So, your right answer here. So, people have a doubt between gamma rays and X rays. So, what is the answer? Yeah, that's absolutely right. Especially for questions like this, you should not take much time. Yes, is it UV rays or gamma rays? Yes, which is used to induce mutation? Yes, quick, Anakin, what do you think is the answer here? Yes, is it UV rays or gamma rays? So here it is gamma rays. So that is the right answer. This is used to induce your um, mutagenesis. Fine. So with this, we are done with this chapter. So once again, since we have time, let me give you a wide along recap. So what are the things that you have to remember in strategies or what are the topics that you have to concentrate in your strategies? So your strategies for enhanced food production has a least weightage. So it has maximum one question from animal breeding and one question from plant breeding. Okay. So the first thing you study is your animal husbandry. So, under your animal husbandry, 
so you have certain things which you have to concentrate so the first thing is you will talk about your dairy farm management your poultry farm management apiculture and what are the types of breeding and what are fisheries okay so in dairy and poultry it is almost the same the same points you have to choose a disease resistant variety you have to choose a high yielding variety you have to take care of them etc okay so your apiculture is your honey rearing of honey so what are the uses of honey so what knowledge you should have if you are going to open an apiculture so then breeding so you have to understand the types of breeding the advantages and the disadvantages along with the example and fisheries you have to remember the examples of fresh water and the marine water fishes okay fine so with this we are closing the chapter of animal husbandry but here you can control the breeding experiments that is your by your multiple ovulation embryo transfer technology or artificial insemination so by this you can actually move forward and control how much of a uh, calf you should have what variety of offspring you should have etc okay yes apiculture in crop fields you are absolutely right what is royal actin is it royal actin or royal jelly so it's based on the question so i don't think it's royal actin it should be royal jelly okay yeah fine so then we move to plant breeding so why do we do plant breeding so what is the need to do plant breeding so one is to increase the yield to make it disease resistant and the other one is to make it pest resistant so these are the things why we do plant breeding so you follow conventional breeding of doing the germplasm then to selecting the parents mating the parents finding the offspring etc sometimes you can even do mutational breeding okay so here when you are doing disease resistant varieties you should know what are the diseases you have and you have to know what are the uh, pathogens that causes this diseases right so pest resistant there are some natural methods which you should remember fine then we are going to talk about your single cell protein which can give us more protein than we uh, spend on your plants and animals right so the examples of the single cell protein so here you also have biofortification so in biofortification you should know what are the donors so what are the examples which have enhanced food supply okay and the last part of this chapter is your tissue culture so in tissue culture you should know terms like your explant you should know what is your explant you should know what is micro propagation you should know what is meristem culture and finally you should know what is protoplast fusion so these are some of the terms which you should pay attention to fine yes no so actin is your contractile protein but there is something known as royal actin yeah that is a term biological term so that i i mean it is a royal jelly because it has a filamentous protein etc i'm not very sure but i clarify it tomorrow okay hi nimu yes hello so thank you so much for joining my session so please do like share and subscribe so this is the entire summary of this chapter so now we move to the next chapter that is microbes in human welfare so this revision is much quicker right yes okay so where do where are microbes used so what are the things that we studied in this chapter so we studied about your household products we spoke about your industrial products so in industries how uh, is it no no it is not important for needs so don't worry yes i'm fine how are you doing so thank you okay so industrial products it is used in beverages it is used in the production of chemicals it is also used in the production of your uh, enzymes so this is how microbes are used in the industry so then sewage treatment production of biogas biocontrol agents and biofertilizers so these are the topics that we were talking about in this chapter okay so i look beautiful today yes thank you so much fine so which of the following in sewage treatment removes suspended solids secondary treatment primary treatment sludge treatment tertiary treatment yes so which of the following sewage treatment removes suspended solids okay you're sending me love from tamil nadu so thank you i am sending you love from kota on behalf of career point thank you yes 
So, which removes suspended solids? So, suspended solids are removed by your primary treatment. Your primary treatment, no, it is not sludge treatment. It is primary treatment. Okay, Raghu. So, primary treatment is also known as your mechanical treatment or your mechanical process. So, in this chapter, the most important thing is your sewage treatment. So, in 5 minutes, I will give you a recap of the entire sewage treatment so that you don't forget. So, we are revising sewage treatment now and then we will continue with the questions. Okay. So, what is sewage? So, the water which mixes with a lot of human... Uh, where is my best friend Keshav? Keshav has not turned up. So, I don't know where is he. Okay. Anyway, he's a student of my paid class now. So, he came to my paid class. So, it's fine. So, let him study. So, sewage treatment. So, when the human excreta, the human fetus mixes with the water. So, this is your sewage treatment. Fine? Yes? Ma'am, solids are suspended in primary and removed by uh, secondary. No, suspended solids and impurities are removed by the primary treatment. The secondary treatment removes only organic matter. They do not have any solid removal. Okay, Antonia B? Yes? Fine. So, this sewage treatment, so before it moves into the water bodies, we have to treat it. So, first we have the primary treatment. So, primary treatment is also known as your mechanical process. So, in this process, you do two steps. One is filtration and the other one is sedimentation. So, in filtration, you remove all the floating particles. Yes, so all the floating particles are removed by filtration and whatever is remaining, you allow it to sediment. Okay, so when you allow it to sediment, so the particles settle down. So, whatever settles down is known as your sludge. And this liquid portion is your effluent. So, since this is primary treatment, this is primary effluent and this is primary sludge. Okay, yes. Hi ma'am, good evening. So, thank you so much for joining my session. So, please do like, share and subscribe. Uh, okay, yes Dharani. Okay, so the other one is not you. I thought that you are the same Dharani. Okay, so there are two Dharanis in my session. Yes, a very, very happy good evening. So, thank you so much for joining my session. So, please do like, share and subscribe. Okay, so here we have your primary effluent, right? So, this primary effluent moves to the secondary treatment treatment okay so here you so your primary effluent goes inside okay is constantly agitated so in your mixy you constantly mix everything right so only ground suppose if you are making tomato chutney or your onion chutney so you make sure everything is properly ground right so there are no clumps formed there's no uh, solid pieces that are present right so, in that case, in your primary F of aerobic bacteria. So, these aerobic bacteria, they are formed in the, in the form of flocks. Combination of bacteria and... Okay. So, your flocks, okay. So, now your aerobic bacteria, which is in the form of flocks, they need oxygen to breathe. So, where will they get their oxygen from? So, they will get their oxygen from the primary effluent, okay. So, primary effluent has a lot of, of the bacteria to get oxygen. The amount of biochemical oxygen demand is the amount of oxygen of your sewage water, okay. Instruments to measure BOD. So, as the BOD reduces, we know the... So, here at the end, we have the flocks settled. So, this is known as your sludge into the tertiary tank and it is treated with chlorine. As sludge is known as your activated sludge. So, either it can be used as an inoculum or a starter culture. Next round of your sewage tree microorganism, right? Okay. So, in the next part, it moves the stir. Flocks are digested by anaerobic. Yeah. They digest your flocks. And as a byproduct, they produce your methane, carbon dioxide, and hydrogen sulfide or H. Okay. So they can also be known as these can be used as your biofuels. So this is known as your gobar gas. Fine. So this is the recap of your sewage treatment.
fine you to chat okay so that's really says yes darni so in my class also there are so many darnis always confusing oh, okay i didn't know darn it's lagging so now it's clear yeah it pauses for me as well and it go is it fast yeah methanogen is right so is it still there's a lag now is it fine are you able to see it properly cap of your sewage treatment so i want you to match column 1 and column 2 so now it's clear so again okay so can you solve this question for me so citric acid is produced by question for me so is it clear now is the video clear so citric acid is produced by monascus purpureus so what is the right answer so a 1 and then we have statins oxidus 2 yes you are absolutely right good so now we go on to enzymes a recap of the enzymes that the microbes give us go team it's saying it has an error Anthony, it's clear. Good evening. So, thank you for joining my lecture. Yes, Vishal. Hello. Yes. Okay. So, let's continue. So, we are talking about the enzymes that we use. So, lipase helps in. No, there it was the technical error here. So, that was the reason. It's completely fine. So, lipases help in these stains. For example, all your detergents like your Tide, your Rim, etc. So, all the detergents they need one particular enzyme, lipase, so that the oily stains are removed. So, they show in your ad, right? So, they can remove oily stains. That is with the help of your lipase. Okay, so pectinases and proteinases they help in juice at home. You have a lot of foam, right? I hope now it's fine. So I guess they have resolved. Fine. Okay. So Vishal has a completely different issue that YouTube will time out him. So continuously text me. So that is the reason it seems. So when you continuously text, YouTube will time out you. Otherwise, it's completely fine. So here we were talking about the enzymes given by microorganisms. I explained lipases. Now we are talking about your pectinases and your proteases. So when you make juices at home, it has a lot of foam. right but when you have a bottle juice it does not have a foam that is because they use uh, enzymes 
so it also gives us another enzyme that is streptokinase from the bacteria streptococcus so this is used when there is a block in your coronary artery or the muscles that is supplying blood to the heart and if there is a clot kinase Fine. So, cyclosporin is an immune suppressive agent. Mom. So, immunosuppressive agent should, or if I donate my tissue to Dharni, so Dharni's body will reject it for because according to Dharni's body, it is foreign, right? So, if, now if I have to give her immunosuppressive agents, right? So, this immunosuppressive agent is. Um, obtained from a type of particular fungus. So you have statins which are produced from yeast that is Monascus purpurus. So please remember SM. Okay. So the blood colors have more amount of cholesterol inhibited by your statins. This is by your feedback inhibition or competitive inhibition mechanism. So question 3. The gut of the cow and the buffalo possesses methanogen cyano. Yes, so they can act on your cellulosic material. So they can act on your cellulosic material, right? And the byproduct is they give your methane, your carbon dioxide plus H plus ion. Hey, OMG, what happened to YouTube? So YouTube is skipping my video. Continue. So are you able to see? No, again it got stuck. Okay, so we'll continue the microbes chapter tomorrow. So we'll finish your still answering. Okay, so what gases are produced in anaerobic carbon dioxide only? Methane, hydrogen, sulfide and carbon dioxide. So here the answer is option B, right? So these are the three things brought to a hospital with myocardial infarction is immediately gives it resolves your clot blusters. Right? So this is option B. So this is streptokinase. I don't know if you can see my question, so I will stop right here. So there is no point I continuously solve the question. Yeah. Yeah, can you still see? Streptokinase, yes, no issues. Can we move forward? So, question number six an organism you raising soya bean crop is. So, soya bean crop here is your uh, leguminous crop. So, here it is rhizobium, right? Yes, are you able to see? Is the video skipping? Is it fast forwarding by itself? Can you still see? lot of issues so we will continue tomorrow no issues i will continue from where i borrow and sorry for the inconvenience and thank you so much for joining my lecture so we will meet tomorrow at 5 pm so until then stay tuned and take care bye